Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about educational beauty. Now, recently I've had so many of you asking me questions on my YouTube comments, asking me how to pick your contour shade. The dark shade of your contour, that seems to be what everyone is a bit confused about how to pick the right shade. So do you go three shades darker? Do you go five shades darker? How do you pick it? I'm gonna go through all of that today in this video with you. I'm gonna be answering all of your questions and make it really easy for you to pick your contour shade. Now, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. And you can catch me over on Instagram too. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so I have a little bit of concealer on and I've done my brows and the reason for that is because I actually wanna apply some of the different shades of contouring so that you can see how I pick the right color for my skin tone and in turn, hopefully that should help you pick the right color for yourself. Now I've had a lot of you asking me questions on some of my videos where you've seen me contour, asking how do I pick the right contour shade and some of you have even written in saying, this is my skin color, like what color cont contour would you suggest that I use? Honestly it's so hard for me to tell you so that's why I probably just like the message and leave it at that because it, it gen genuinely I, I can't tell you because if I'm not in front of you and I'm not analyzing your, your face face like face to face it's really difficult for me to be able to do that I'm just hoping that this video really does help you out so let me just start right from the very beginning. I want to make this really easy to understand so that you guys don't feel overwhelmed with too much information so I'm really really going to make it super basic but touch on all the key points. Now, when it comes to contouring, what is it? Contouring is basically when we darken certain areas of the face to help enhance features and bone structure. It really can be transformative to your face and it really depends how far you go with the contouring. There are very kind of basic, easy ways to contour for someone who maybe just doesn't want that much of a strong finish. And then you can really transform the face if you go kind of all in with contouring. And that's something maybe we can touch on in another video. There are so many different areas that you can contour. The most obvious places are like cheekbones, jawline, nose, chin, forehead. It can help to enhance areas, but it can also help to recede certain facial features. But it isn't something that you have to do every single day. Now when it does come to picking your contour shade, before we jump into the contour shades, I want to really talk about the shadows on your face. Now obviously I have lighting in my studio so you can really get to see exactly what I do on my tutorials. So you're not really going to see much shadow on my face here. But I really want you to kind of analyse the shadows on your face in normal lighting or maybe if you're outside in daylight, you can have a look at where those shadows appear on your face and what kind of colour is that shadow. So a shadow on someone's face isn't going to be the same colour for each person, it really depends on your skin colour to begin with. So have a look at that and you really want to pick a contour colour that helps to, is very similar to the natural shadows on your face. So if you find that part of picking a colour a bit difficult, don't worry because I know that can be a little bit some people might think, well, how do I know what, where my shadows are? Or, you know, they really need it to be a lot more basic than that. Don't worry, that's just one way. So one way is that you can kind of have a look at the natural shadows on your face and you want to kind of replicate that color because ultimately when you're contouring, you're creating more shadow on the face to help enhance and change certain features. But there is another way as well, which is what I'm going to go through now. So I want to really kind of swatch different shades on my face so that you can actually see how I pick the shade and why I've picked the certain shade that I've gone for. Now, a quick note, which is really important before we move forward. So anyone watching the rest of the video, you've got to know this, because if you skip this part, then basically later on, you're going to probably be asking me the same question, the question that I'm about to answer right now. Now, when it comes to contour, you have contour sticks, contour creams, contour powders. Now, I just want to make it very clear, I use most of the time, 99% of the time, I use concealers to contour. And that's just my preference. It doesn't mean that you have to. And secondly, I always contour underneath my foundation. It's a technique called underpainting. I personally absolutely love it. So many other pro makeup artists also use this technique on their clients as well. So it isn't about what's right or wrong. It isn't about the majority. It's about what suits you and what you feel comfortable with. So when it comes to picking the shades, I'm going to be using concealer so don't get scared when you see that okay so it's actually so much easier so okay let's move on now i know that you're going to be watching me 
apply the contour on my own skin tone and not all of you are going to have a similar skin tone to me some of you may be quite pale some of you more um kind of where i am which is more on the olive golden undertone and then some of you may be a lot darker and everything in between now when it comes to your skin tone you really want to understand what your skin tone is if you don't really want to go get so technical with it like and the only reason I'm saying technical is because a lot of people do find it technical. You know, sometimes, like, not a lot of people kind of look at their skin tone and think, mm, I'm a yellow undertone or I have a slight hue of green in my undertone. Like, most people just look at their skin, they know whether they're fair, brown, you know, whatever. So I, I don't want to really touch too much on the undertone side of things but when you are fair skin tone then you want to probably lean more towards kind of taupe shades, much cooler kind of contour colors so it, when you're I am going to be releasing a video soon which basically explains how to pick the right foundation shade for yourself and I kind of explain it thoroughly in that but I will very briefly summarize that in this video to, to which is more tailored towards what we're talking about so when you are looking at the different shades that you have the darker shades it isn't always necessarily a case of picking three shades darker than your skin tone now I can't and that's why I never say to you you know pick two or three shades darker because nowadays there are so many different shades within a range of concealers that you know like you might have 40 shades of concealers that if I say to you pick two shades darker and they've got 50 40 50 shades those two three shades darker than your skin tone may not actually be dark enough in order for it to make a difference when it comes to contouring so I wouldn't say that you should look at how many shades darker I it really is a case of trial and error like kind of trying it out and having a look at the different shades and picking out the ones which you feel are dark enough so you have a handful of them and then you basically within that range that you've picked out pick the right shade which complements your skin tone and kind of mimics shadows on your face so that you can really help to define certain areas now if you have kind of undertone like me so your skin is kind of brown maybe with golden undertone or yellow or olive undertone then kind of golden tones look much better so warmer shades look really good when it comes to contouring if you are much darker in skin tone then I'd always kind of go more towards the kind of red hues because that complements that skin tone and if we're really stuck you know you can always kind of test out the skin tones on the kind of inside of your arm just to have a look and it isn't it isn't because you, know, you can try it on the outside of your arm to be fair it doesn't really matter where it is but as long as it's somewhere that you have an overall under like decent amount of skin where you can see what your skin color is and then you can kind of have a look at those different shades on your arm and say right okay this one looks a little bit kind of way too orangey for my skin and if it's too orangey it's going to make your overall skin look orange so it does depend how much you contour as well obviously you can start very small and then you can build it up if you want but we're gonna we're gonna do how I contour we're gonna do it how I contour and then you can take away what you want to take away from that okay we're gonna start with a this is actually a contour stick this, this is actually the Fenty matte sticks so you can use these as concealers some of the shades the matte shades now this shade is amber this is a pretty gray color now i just want to apply this so you guys can see and I, I i actually saw somewhere where you can see that is super gray but it isn't right for me but at the same time it is going to be right for someone who's maybe a lot kind of fairer in skin tone so it really depends on what color those shadows would be so all of this depends on your undertone and your skin color so those aren't the same thing. So your undertone is what's kind of underneath your skin. It's the tone that's coming through that undertone. And then on top is your overall skin color, you know, which you can call kind of overtone. Well, it isn't, I don't think anyone's actually called it overtone, but you know, you've got undertone and then you've got what's on top. So you can call it what you want to call it. That's your overall skin color. It's your skin color. And then you've got your undertone underneath. And then, you know, when you, it, that's why everyone's skin is so different because someone might have the same undertone but a different over color like skin color and then put it, putting them together it you know it ends up with some you end up with something different it really depends on the person that you're working on their undertone their their skin color is this the kind of shade which kind of complements their skin tone now when i look at uh, contour shades i don't look at them and think okay well I would use this one on this color skin. I would use this one on this color skin because there are just hundreds of different skin tones, different undertones, you know, like that there's, so it's so difficult to say, right, okay, this one, 
is best for you if you have this color skin because you might have you might have five people with the same skin color but different undertones you know so it doesn't mean that this is going to go for each person that has the same overtone skin color yeah so hopefully i'm making sense i'm trying to make this really easy to understand so it doesn't mean this is going to work for everyone this definitely isn't going to work for me because it just is going to give me this weird kind of hue on my skin tone that isn't going to work for me so i'm going to take this off and we're going to move on to the next one now this again may work for you if you have that kind of skin tone that kind of complements this next up we've got the shade warm almond in this is the hourglass foundation stick and i'm just gonna apply this here quick thing right so as well as what it suits like what undertone and what skin color these contour sticks will suit it does also make a difference on what your overall style of makeup is your preference so when i go to different clients and if i if i'm doing makeup on a new client i always ask them like what their preference is when it comes to their overall skin tone like do, do they like to look slightly lighter like brighter than their natural skin color or their neck area or do they like to look a bit more bronzer you know like it, it really depends on what your style is as well i like to look a little bit more bronze a little bit more warmth in my face that's just my preference so this is something that could work for me i do feel like it's not dark enough to give me that really transformative contour but it's enough where it can give me some kind of contour so a subtle shadow a subtle warm shadow but it isn't very dark if you see what i mean it's more warming to the face so this if i was to contour this all over this will give me a very warm finish to my overall face and it will help to sculpt certain areas but it isn't really kind of it's not transformative it's not really going to help to really sculpt areas you know i can't rely on this purely to just sculpt those areas and that's it it's just going to give me warmth in certain areas so that's another one that we've done now i'm using the benefit boy and cakeless concealer in number 12 okay this is a lot darker and i feel like this is a shade which could actually do something it could really actually help to contour my face and it, it does depend on the the fluidity of the contour as well like for example i use concealers some of them are going to be slightly kind of stick form some of them are going to be liquid form so it really depends on what you find easy to blend as well that everything kind of ties in together so it's all about what your preference is this is dark enough for it to actually contour so do you see what i mean like this may not be three shades or four shades darker than my skin color when it comes to looking at a variety of concealers but i do know that this is dark enough it's dark enough to create some shadow so if i was to blend that in i'm really going to see that there is some sculpting there it's not just going to warm the area it's not necessarily warming but it does have that darkness in there to really help sculpt and contour the area Con like i said contouring is about creating definition enhancing bone structure and your facial features so it depends how how much you want to contour do you want to contour very subtle like in a very subtle way so that you have slight kind of sculpting but mainly it's like giving you that warm bronzed finish as well so it depends what you're doing all in one or do you want to kind of like contour where it's transformative and you really want to kind of chisel those cheekbones uh slim down your jawline in case in that case this color would work really well for me okay we've got another one now okay this is very dark this is extremely dark this is the makeup forever hd concealer in 54 i would say this is way too dark for me this is just i would say you'd need to be a little bit darker in skin tone to to be able to use this shade so yeah this is way too dark for me this is i mean you could i could potentially use this for really crazy contouring but overall i, I think this is way too dark for me you know so you've got to kind of swatch them on your arm and if i were to put all these swatches on my arms on my arm you would be able to see that hold on a minute that one looks way too dark or that one isn't really doing anything other than adding some warmth you know so you've got to really analyze what you're looking at and this is way too dark for me so we're going to take this one off because even blending this it's probably going to end up just making me look like i've got pigmentation so we're going to take this off now this is the mark jacobs accomplice concealer in tan 46 this is actually a concealer that I do use for contouring. 
but I use this when I want a soft contour. So can you see that it is slightly warming? It's not overly warming though, because that other one that I used earlier, I think the hourglass one, that's very warm. It was a little bit orangey. So I know that's gonna give me a very warm finish. This is kind of warming, but it isn't overly warming. You know, there's not, it's not too, I, I would say this is kind of a neutral undertone to it. So this is darker than my skin tone, dark enough where I feel like it does actually give some sculpting but it isn't too dark where it's completely transformative. So this is what I use when I want a very soft contour. When I still want to, you know, kind of enhance my cheekbones, I still want to kind of add some uh, definition around the jawline or some warmth around the perimeter of my face, but it isn't too warming. It's like enough where I feel like it's giving me that contour, but it's not crazy, you know, it's a bit subtle. So that's what I use when I want a soft contour finish. Next, we are on to the NARS Concealer and let me apply there this is another contour that I use I use this when I want more of a transformative contour this one you can see is kind of dark similar to that makeup for everyone but this makeup for everyone was like super dark this is dark but I still see a tone to it whereas with this makeup forever really dark one I didn't see much color to it like it just looked kind of almost black so it was too dark there wasn't enough tone in there for me whereas this is dark enough to give me a transformative contoured finish but equally it's not dark without any kind of tone it has some tone to there it's brown and it does kind of help to sculpt the area, give me that definition. It's not warming, it's not gonna give me this super warm finish to my face, so it purely does focus on contouring for me. So this is another concealer that I use, which I absolutely love for this. Now I'm gonna apply this everywhere so you can actually see how I use this. Let's blend this in first. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, the brushes or the tools that you use, I think I mentioned this, they make all the difference in how your contour turns out. If you use more of a fluffy, soft brush, you're gonna get more of a diffused finish to that look. If you use a more dense brush, you're gonna get more of a defined finish. Now I am using more of a, a dense brush, but that's because I do want more of a defined finish around here. Now this is the cheekbone area. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just buff this in and I'm just kind of like patting and I want that nice kind of sculpted cheekbone where it gives me that darkness there and kind of like creates that shadow for me. So do you see how that's created that shadow there? And like I said, it's not overly warming, but it does create a shadow there. So this brush I really like for kind of buffing in the contour because it does give me that nice sculpted finish. And I feel like I have more control over how it ends up looking. See, that's also giving me that really nice shadow there. So now I'm gonna use more of a fluffy brush. It may look dense, but it's actually not. It's actually very fluffy. So I'm using that and I'm gonna apply this around my forehead. And the reason I'm using this brush is I just wanna show you the difference it can make. Now, I'm just gonna apply this around here. I usually apply it in these areas here and maybe a little bit here. Sometimes I just drag it down, but I'm just gonna show you. So this is a much kind of softer brush. It gives you more of a defeat, diffused look. Do you see how much like, that was pretty easy to blend in, but it just isn't as dense. I don't know what happened to my throat there. Whereas here, I feel like you get more of a dense, finish like I've kept the product in that same area quite defined whereas here it spreads out more it's more of a diffused diffused look okay we're gonna do the nose now okay so this is how I contour my nose I actually use that same Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush but I use a smaller side So it's actually still a dense brush because I want that precise blending, that precise contour. So now you can see we've blended that in and you can see how we've created shadow on certain areas. You can see how we've like not highlighted, but enhanced certain features. I've honestly changed the shape of my nose because I prefer it to look a bit smaller. And I've really defined the cheekbones here so you can see how there's that really nice definition there. I've helped to kind of like, just kind of like give that nice structure there. And I've also kind of warmed the perimeter of my face because that's an overall look that I like. So that can be done for contouring as well. Like if you want to make the forehead look a little bit smaller, I personally like a warmer perimeter of the face and it to be slightly brighter along the center of the face. So that hopefully will explain to you how you pick the right contour shade. So it isn't a case of picking three, four shades darker than your skin tone because 
you don't know how much of a variety the selection has when you're picking those shades. So I can't say to you three shades darker, four shades darker. I would suggest picking out five or six contour shades which are dark enough to be able to make a difference to your face. And that's something that you should be able to tell, you know, like, is it, is, is are you gonna be able to create a shadow with that? You know, something that could potentially look like a shadow on your face. Then if you can, then pick out those shades and then you can kind of narrow it down from there. So it's really a case of narrowing it down bit by bit. Pick out dark shades that you know are definitely gonna make, create shadow. Out of those shades, you pick out the one that kind of complements your skin, skin tone more. Also, before you even do that, have a think about what your ultimate goal is in terms of the type of look that you want. Do you want, want a kind of nice, more bronzed, warmer finish to your face? If so, you know you wanna lean more towards slightly warmer, shades when it comes to contour shades and because it's just going to help you to, to help to give you that nice finish and if you don't want that then obviously maybe stick more towards the cool tones or neutral tones so that you're not kind of adding more warmth to your face hopefully that kind of makes you understand how to pick your shade i can't sit here and say if you're fair skin and this is the shade you need to go towards because honestly the number of skin tones skin undertones and overtones that i've worked on it is i can't sit here and say that you know, if you're fair skin, then you need to go for this. If you're this color skin, then you need to go for that. I, I can't even, to me, it doesn't even make sense to categorize it in that way because I can't say if you're fair skin, go for this. If you're uh, medium or, or my skin tone, go for this. If you're darker skin tone, go for that. As if there are only three categories of skin tones. We've got so, there's so many different people out there, so many different skin tones, so many different undertones. It's just not right for me to categorize it in that way because I'm leaving out so many people in between. So hopefully, this kind of like makes you see, you know, how you can how you can narrow it down for yourself. So I'm just gonna finish off the rest of my look very quick and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so my makeup is done now and you can see that the contour has still come through. So just in case you were asking questions about doing your contour underneath foundation, what's the point? I have so many videos on this, guys, so you can go check them out and it will explain everything to you and show you exactly why contouring underneath foundation gives you the most amazing, seamless, soft focus look. I haven't applied any bronzer on top of this or any powder contour on top of this because I really wanted you to see how it does come through and I wanted to show you how that, that, how that contour hasn't necessarily kind of really given me a super warm finish in these areas. It's just kind of darkened the areas and like I said, enhanced my facial features and defined certain bone structure on my face. So hopefully that has kind of like explained it to you and that that's answered all of your questions on how to pick the right contour shade for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's answered all of your questions about how to pick your contour shade. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.